Not yet. Some people get it. Not everybody's there. Reading symbols, counting how many we've seen. At some point, we're going to non-deterministically go, stop reading symbols, look at this symbol, and remember what it is. Zero or one on anything. Leave the stack alone. Don't touch it. I saw a zero. I saw a one. Just like a finite state machine. We're remembering whether we saw a zero in that arrowed box or whether we saw a one. If we saw a zero, we're hoping to get a, a one later. If we saw a one, we're hoping to get a zero later. So this machine is going to work in parallel. We've remembered the state. We have something interesting about it. OK, so if I saw a 0, now I continue to move along the string, completely ignoring what I see, not touching the stack, not doing anything, just marching along until some point I say, oh, I'm going to see another symbol. I'm going to see another symbol. Oh, dee -do, dee -do, dee -do. I'm going to see another symbol. Now I want a mismatch. I decided here's a 1. I think this is the mismatching 1. And then afterwards, I'll check whether the number of symbols I counted here is the same as the number of symbols that are left. And if they are, that means I'm ready to accept. So in this stage here, we look at zeros, and we ignore them. We look at ones, and we ignore them. And at some point, we decide, okie dokie, I see a one, and that's a mismatch. One. Any, any. And I'll call that mismatch. Here, it's the same thing. 0, any, any. 1, any, any. 0, mismatch. So from this top way, if I get a 1, I get a mismatch. From the bottom way, if I get a 0, I get a mismatch. And that mismatch can be guessed at any point. This is a very non-deterministic state, because we can move along, or we can decide to go here. Yeah, Blake? Uh, is there some reason that you're restricting your stack alphabet to just being a counter? Because couldn't you just uh, push, if you see a 0, push the 0 on the stack, or if you see a 1, push the 1 on the stack, I... and then match it up that way? And then, and then, and then uh, later on, choose if the input's a 1, and stop the top of the stack is a 0, then pop, or, or the other way around? I could do that, but I don't need to do that. That's more or less what we did last time, for the most part. If you did that, you wouldn't be able to just skip symbols here. It seems like it would just, it would just make the, the two middle states, the I saw a zero here? state and the I saw one state, the same state. Mm -hmm. I saw a zero would just be if the zero is on top of the stack. And the I saw a one state is if the one's on top of the stack. Oh, I see. I understand what you want to say. You want to read these things through it's the and, same, it's the same thing. it's and the same leave it. Yeah, that's, you could do that. You could use the stack to hold it rather than the state to hold it. I understand what you mean. Sure, you could definitely do that. I just didn't think of that, but I did it this way. Yeah, you could definitely do that. Yeah. Good idea. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. All right, so here we are. Now we made a guess, we get a mismatch. How do we check whether we're OK and we mismatch on the right symbols? At this point, 0 any pop, 1 any pop. And if we hit the end, when the empty stack shows up, then we accept. This is the check that the two symbols we guessed we guessed here, and we guessed here. That those two guesses are the right relationship to one another. This is a really a different idea than the first way we did it. The first day we did it was a variation on the regular WW reverse. And this way makes use out of non-determinism in a way that encourages you to think of it as a higher level of guessing. You can guess things if you can kind of deterministically check that your guess was right. And that should remind you very much of that MP complete stuff we did, right? How long does it take? You make your guess for free, but then you have to deterministically check your guess. That's really what's going on here, too.
Okay, questions about this? We're going to do a really, really hard problem now, and I won't write the machine for it, but I will sketch out the idea. It's a puzzle kind of a problem that I could give you and you could think about for a week and not get. Sometimes you might get it in an hour. But it's a hard problem, and I would never give it just straight on a homework all on its own. I think it's too tricky. But, but if I give you the idea, then you should be able to write the machine. And it's not just a puzzle out of nowhere. It's kind of a nice problem. Michael asked me before whether we could do WW. What was the answer? Can you do it with a non-deterministic pushdown machine? I said you couldn't. I haven't proved it. We're going to prove it next class with pumping lemmas and stuff. Do it with a Q. Uh, you could do it with a Q, I guess, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what does that tell you? Yeah, but then you couldn't do the... Oh, no? You sure? You can do a lot with a Q, right? I mean, here, here's a Q. Q's first in, first out. And, uh, and I want to use, and I want to actually do a stack, but all I got is a stupid Q, right? So every time... I want to uh, pop something off, it's not in the front, right? It's down in the back. So all I got to do is, is put something, you know, I, I put my little marker in the back of the queue, and I pop things off the queue. Out, 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 out. Oh, there's my marker. I just threw away the one I wanted. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but I can save the one before. I can actually loop it around because I don't really want to lose them, right? Out they go and in back they go. Out they go, in the back they go. There's my marker. Come on, marker. Right in my pocket like a magician. And there's the one I wanted, the one that came out right before the marker. So I, I can do pushes and pops in a stack way on a queue. It just takes a lot of work. It's a big simulation. A single push and pop is a linear operation that takes time proportional to the number of things in your queue. But you can do it. You just pay for it. Uh, Blake, you had a question? Uh, no, I was just going to say that but you need the additional. I mean, yeah. You need Right, you, that, but that's, that's one state, that's okay. And you also need extra time. So anyway, uh, a Q can do one stack. Can it do two stacks? Well, you think about that. Can it do two stacks? Maybe. You can interleave the stacks. It can definitely do two stacks. Qs are very powerful. More powerful than you'd think. Especially how much tension stacks get. <laughs> Burning the candle on both ends. <laughs> you have a question? Well, I, I, I okay. figured out how a Q can simulate stack. Yeah. Oh, it is important that you get it, but you don't have to get it right now. Right. <laughs> and you will get it probably by lunch. That's what some of you <laughs> All right, let's, let's work on this. You can't do this with a non-deterministic pushdown machine. And we could work all day long and not be able to get it. And we will never get it. But what's really cool is that you can get its complement. And the reason I did the second way here is because how do we do the complement of WW reverse? The first way, we massage the way that we did WW reverse, right? We did its complement by... by by fiddling with the way we did the first one. Well, that's not going to be a good strategy here because we don't have any way to do WW. So we're completely on our own. And we need an idea that's completely unique. That's why we did this one in a different way. Because at least this idea can build on that idea. Everybody OK so far? Getting tired. You're tired. Um, all right, let's think about this. We're going to think about it like a puzzle, not with any detailed machine written down. We're just going to write a picture on the board and think for a minute. If we mimic the idea here, what we'd like to do is make that same kind of a guess. A guess here and a guess here. But what's the condition that we want to check here? We want to check that the distance from the left end here, this distance, is the same as is the same as the distance from the middle to this one. So let me now suggest a bunch of bad ways to do this. We'll push symbols on the stack like we did before, remembering how many symbols it took to get here. And then we'll just randomly move along until we get to this guy and guess where the middle is. And then we'll start popping symbols and guess this one. And now all we have to do is check that we guess the right spot for the middle. But the way we guessed the right stop for the middle before was that we 